Hey everyone. So just over my shoulder that way is the location of what was once the most controversial back alley in my city. It was so contentious that at one point City Hall even banned the use of a specific word in describing it. That word was so triggering that it ended up basically killing what I thought was one of the more interesting projects my city had looked at in recent years. And it actually goes a long way in explaining why so many North American cities are so timid in experimenting with the way that they develop. I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling and bike commuting. And today's episode is all about that moment in my city's history, the Voldemort of city planning, the urban project that must not be named. So this story actually begins back in the 1970s in the city of Delft in the Netherlands. And as uh, recounted in the great book Curbing Traffic by Melissa and Chris Brennan, which you should totally read, there was a particular street in a particular neighborhood in this city where the residents just got tired of cars taking over their residential street. And so they decided to do something about it. In an act of civil disobedience, they kind of blocked the street off from cars. And rather than coming in and bulldozing those barricades, the city sat down and what emerged was something new, a new kind of street, a shared street. The idea was that everyone had access to the same space equally, car drivers, kids playing, people out walking, people just hanging out. Kind of the inverse of a street here in North America where only really one user has access to the street and that is a car driver. The idea caught on and it's been replicated many times in the Netherlands. Today there's an estimated 2 million people who live on streets like this and they've taken on different forms. Sometimes there are barriers in the streets so or car drivers have to sort of weave very slowly around. Sometimes there's a, a clear extra entrance and an exit for a car driver so they know they're entering one of these spaces. But the basic idea is the same, that a space should be shared and that people should communicate with each other to, in order to navigate the space. The idea has caught on a little bit in other places in the UK. Sometimes they're called home streets in the North America. Occasionally you hear them referred to as complete streets. But most people these days know them by the Dutch word, and that is Voonerf, or a living street, a shared space. Did I pronounce that right? Voonerf? Close enough. Which brings us back to my city of Calgary and this humble back alley I mentioned earlier. So back in the 2010s, City Hall had some money to try some new things, and someone had the idea of turning this humble space into a shared space, a, a Voonerf. Great idea, right? Especially for a pilot project. Well, not so fast. After about four years of some sometimes crazy debate in which uh, the, the city councillor of the region said he was horrified by the whole process, the idea was killed. What happened was this project became politicized and a group of locals who thought this fancy European fancy pants idea was a waste of money got opposed to it and that was sort of the end of it. It was a bit of your typical NIMBY debate, but with a bit of like Eurocentric elitism thrown into the conversation as well. Funnily enough, the very word Voonerf became kind of a shorthand, like this triggering word in the conversations. Whenever it came up, it just was like a symbol of a waste of money and importing crazy ideas from Europe. At one point, City Hall even asked its people to stop using that word because it was so triggering to a group of people. But by then it was too late. The project was dead. But that's not the end of the story. So I'm here in Banff, Alberta, which is about 100 kilometers from Calgary. A much different town, but in the same province and in the same sort of political culture. But it's different in that Banff is a full-on tourist town. This is one of the most popular tourist places in the country. Only a few thousand people live here, but it gets millions of visitors a year. Now, a few years ago, one of the important streets in this town was slated for some infrastructure upgrades. But rather than rebuild it as it was before, which was a typical North American street with crowded cars, crowded sidewalks, and not that pleasant for anyone, an idea was hatched. Yep, you guessed it. A Voonerf. So the original reaction to the idea wasn't all that different here at Banff as it was in Calgary. Even though the context is a lot different, this is not a back alley. This is a really important street in the city. But also the context is much different because this place is a tourist town and not a back alley. So debate ensued and somehow the idea got through. And lo and behold, here we are a few years later, a real life voter in a Canadian town in Alberta. Kind of amazing. And it is a much different kind of street than it was before. There's no curbs or sidewalks. Everyone's welcome to this space. I see pedestrians, cyclists, cars, but everyone's going really slowly. There's lots of barriers. There's 
patios, there's concrete blocks, there's planters. It all just sort of changes the whole vibe of this place. It's just a much more pleasant place to walk down and ride a bike down. And as you can see, much different for the car drivers too. It's just like a more human scale. Everything's just scaled down a little bit. So I've asked some locals what they feel about this street and some of them are not in love with it to be honest. Uh, they told me that when the street first opened most people were just confused by it. I mean this is a new concept. Most North Americans have never seen a street like this before. But another thing I've heard now is that some of the businesses along here are sort of arguing about who should have access to the patio space on the street. So clearly there are some benefits. And if I was to guess, I'd say most of the locals have gotten used to it, even if some of them do miss being able to drive their car down here more quickly. But maybe what's most interesting to me is that here we are 50 years after the idea took hold in the Netherlands and 10 years after the idea was tried and failed in Calgary. Here we are in a Canadian city, we have a full on booner. Isn't that amazing? Now I'd say this isn't the perfect booner. I think the best place for these, other than a tourist town, is on a neighborhood street where residents can get out and enjoy uh, the safety of the street, uh, kids can go and play, and you don't have to worry about the noise and the traffic and the danger that come with cars. But still, here we are, an interesting point that got us here. And uh, I think with so many tourists here, I think a lot of people are going to see what a Boonerf can be. And who knows, maybe we'll see these kind of streets appear in other cities around North America as well, and other places around the world. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Oh, before I go, a quick shout out to all these amazing people who contributed to the health of this channel via Super Thanks. I appreciate the support from all of you. It really means a lot. And if you're interested in helping support this channel, please look for the thanks button right below this video you're watching right now. Thank you, everyone. It really means a lot to see your support.